Hello everyone, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Welcome to Quilting Window Life. We have had so much fun lately, going through a lot of beautiful quilts. We started with a simple square, then we venture into triangles, and today I have something fun for you and exciting. You remember the strip we talked about it last week? What happened when you take a ruler, find a 45 degree or 60 angle on the ruler and start cutting down? You're gonna have some diamonds. So today's quilts are diamond quilts. We're gonna be seeing a lot of beautiful stars made from them and I am super excited for you. Oh, just wait and make sure you stay to the end of the show because I have I have a special surprise for you guys to see something that I finished last night and I can't wait to share it with you. So please watch and enjoy it. If you wonder where the quilts are coming from, I have took them from uh, some of our collection of quilts from Patches of Star Book. It's a beautiful book. If you ever want to make star quilts, this book is for you. It doesn't only have quilts that are diamonds, but also quilts like this one with stars that it's a Soto star. Stars as a layout, stars as a sashing, beautiful stars in quilts, patches of stars is the book for you to go. Some of the quilts are from our handful of scraps book. You're familiar already with that one, my favorite uh, book for scrappy quilts. And then also few patterns. And I wanted to put a special spotlight on rainbow star and sticks and stone star. I'm gonna po point it to those quilts as I'm showing them to you. Let's start it up. What a beautiful quilt that I have on the top of the table. This one is a special quilt because my husband gave it to me for my birthday. It's an antique quilt and it's made with eight point stars, a tiny little eight point stars. And what it's so special, remember those little four patches that we love so much? Look how beautiful they look in our border. Oh, I love this quilt. I like it so much because of the plain background. And in the end of the show, I'm gonna show you two fabrics that are just amazing for backgrounds for quilts like the one that is behind me or this one right here. If you want to mimic that antique look, I have two fabrics for you that are perfect. So this one is just a single eight point star. If you sew multiple strips together and again use that ruler with 45 degree, you can maybe make a a beautiful star like this. This one is another antique quilt and I love the coloring in this quilt. The green, the navy, just stunning. And notice that this one block right here, how the strip of fabric just flow and uh, spin right in the center of that star. I know, you think this is unbelievable. This quilt is 60 degree star. It's a, another antique quilt. It is one of my personal favorites. And this one, the blocks are only half an inch. So the, uh, the diamonds in it, 60 degree diamonds, half an inch. Look at the float of fabric that it spills through this quilt as someone had the bucket of scraps and was making this quilt and enjoying whatever came to them. This one is beautiful. What a treasure. Sometimes you don't make stars with diamonds. You maybe make thousand pyramids. And this is another antique quilt that I wanted to share with you today. And I hope you're getting inspired and you're ready to take that ruler. Make sure when you're making eight point star, one of the most important thing is to start your fabrics before you start working on your block. Start your fabrics and you can use whichever product you like. I like best press and I press it from the back then I start cutting my strips. Look at this beautiful star from my uh, pattern called Sticks and Stones. I just love it, how nice the center is. I tweaked a little bit the traditional star to get the coloring like this. Oh, I love the softness of the color and the fall feel to this beautiful, beautiful quilt. One of the first star that I ever made was Bethlehem star. And I have a quilt from um, the same pattern 
Look at this one. Isn't that beauty? Bethlehem Star. It really showcases the colors. And this one is made from batiks. And I add an extra glow right here. One of the first quilts that I ever uh, saw it and worked from was a quilt that Michael's grandmother had it. She had the quilt. Uh, hidden in her cupboard and she was cutting it to pieces. I confront her about it and she told me that this was her first quilt that she made and after her husband passed away she took it off her bed, cut it and dust the house with it. She no longer wanted to have it on her bed. I asked her to please share the leftover of the quilt with me. And from those leftovers, I was able to figure it out, the pattern to make few of those quilts for our family. I just love that quilt. Ah, and I loved grandma that she was so sharing with everything that she had. Here, look at this one, a rainbow star. What a beauty, isn't that delightful? In this one, what I did is I used a beautiful over the rainbow collection batiks and I add some major applique to the background. Look at this, what happened with this quilt. I just love it. The coloring, it is just beautiful. And the applique really adds to those background pieces. I like to put a star or applique in it to fill it up the area front cover quilt from our scrappy fireworks. Notice that one, isn't that delightful? Oh, just eye candies. Look at this. I love the applique on this one. And notice the background. It really matters what color background you use for your star, because if you want the star to glow and bounce off the quilt, use lighter background. If you want a little bit more muted, and have the uh, diamonds play right inside the star, use the darker background. And in this case, I use the batik right here in a more gray tint to it. Our Texas star definitely takes the winning spot for one of the smaller diamonds. And those are half an inch finished diamonds. Look at this. It is inspired by antique quilt. And I love the sashing in between the stars. It is just beautiful. Oh, this was so much fun. And you're going to say, this must be so difficult to the smaller diamonds. Believe it or no, smaller diamonds are easier to work with it because you don't have the stretch of fabric as you're making the blocks. The bigger pieces, the more distance for your seams and more area that you can stretch, pull and push. So for me, the smaller stars work a little bit better. But you know, like I said, if you start your fabric and prepare the right way, you are on your way to make a beautiful star quilt. And look at those diamonds in this quilt and this applique. This one calls Pennsylvania Star. And again, I just adore this quilt. Boy, those quilts are just beautiful and big. This is just stunning on a bed because of the size, big pieces, the five stars that I have, the glow, and of course the applique. That just, it just adds that fine touch to it. And uh, I love this one. This one calls Pennsylvania Star. Oh, I made this one with one of the collections that I designed and I combined batiks and printed fabric together. This one was the Jelly Bean Collection. Unfortunately, this one sold out, but we have so many beautiful fabric. And what it's nice about collection is that you have everything matching in it. So if you want to make a really nice stars, you go ahead, grab a collection, a bundle and start working from that. Then you know all the fabrics are really nicely go together. But if you like scraps like me, there's another way to enjoy it and have everything matching. Remember through all our classes with the scrappy quilts through our live shows, we have been learning to anchor some of the scrappiness. So notice I have scrappy diamonds right here, but then I go ahead and have the beautiful plain diamonds. First of all, I don't have to match anything to each other. So if I made a mistake, not a problem. I could square, square things up. What that means, you put a diamond ruler, creative grids have a great diamond ruler, really nicely trim it, then cut a plain diamond for here. And then when you put your star together, it will lay nice and flat. 
I love putting something fun and exciting in the centers of my stars. And this quilt is from our book, Scrappy Fireworks, and I just love it. I think that extra little scraps and glow really adds to this quilt and makes it fun and exciting. Oh, just beautiful. From that same book, Scrappy Fireworks, you can find a pattern called Summer Star. Look at, at that Summer Star. Isn't that delightful? And now I'm going to ask you, do you think this is more difficult to make or easier? Yes, you're right. It's easier to make. Why? Because you're only making the scrappy strips right here. Last diamond is in light. You're going to cut that off, add a triangle in a corner, squirt things out. Oh, you want to see how it's made? Make sure you tune in to our YouTube channel because this is one of our upcoming classes on the YouTube channel. So you can actually take that class and learn how to make double, triple, quadruple, eight point star and create medallions like this. I got this. I got you. And you can work with scraps. You can work with collections. Notice I started with brown. I have my yellows, greens, and I went into scrappy blues all the way around and like I said the last row I just cut off the diamonds to create that square and add triangles in a corner right now we have the summer star on our website as a pattern and I did the front cover quilt with our brand new collection secret stash so go to our website at laundrybasketquilts.com and you can see that one right there so we just went through all these beautiful quilts with diamonds that are cut on 45 degree angle. But remember, what happened when you cut a 60 degree angle? You get six point stars. So eight point stars and six point stars. Look at this one, Western star, six point star. I just adore this one. And I love this quilt so much because it belongs to my son, Michael, my little boy. Oh, he's no longer little, but I made this one for him. And this one called a Western star. What a beauty, just wonderful. And I love the lightness of the background. Notice how much the colors just glow on that quilt. Beautiful. And and our last quilt, sweet blend, perfect for jelly roll. If you ever have a jelly roll that you don't know what to do with it and you know how to use it, this pattern is amazing. And don't be worried about it. It's actually super simple to do it. It is broken down to rows. So you do not have a, um, like big blocks. It really, this is the block right here look at this is the block right here and you take that block and rotate just follow the pattern is broken down beautifully it's one of my personal favorites simply because i can use a jelly roll and it looks amazing isn't that stunning so that is one of the last one but i did promise you some surprises i hope you enjoy all the beautiful stars that we have just seen it and i promise you some surprises remember last week you asked me about threads for quilting we have this thread for machine quilting it is beautiful i have this really pretty teal blue very light it's like washed teal and i have a beautiful i call it funky green in it and two beiges if you want something for machine quilting this one is it and then my two personal favorite right now brand new we have the secret stash threads from orofil that's for regular piecing applicking and if you want it, you can quilt, but only small project with that one. This one is my um, sig um, signature style, and I love this. This would just basically go with anything that you wanted to sew. Perfect for traditional, modern quilts. This one is spectacular. So those are the two new threads that we have. And I brought something because I want you guys to know I'm in love with it. And also, speaking 
of threads. I don't know if you know, Orofill has low sets like this. I opened this one. So in a low set, you get three green, three red. Visit our website. We have all of the threads ready, set, go. And of course, if you wanted something light, 2310, my favorite, if for lighter one for sewing. So those are for Orofill threads. And I did promise you this fabric. So there are two bolts that I have. This one is from Linen Texture. So you can go ahead and check that one out. And this one is from Olive Branch. And for me, those two fabrics are perfect if you want to mimic antique look to a quilt to get a really nice background. I love it. It's a little bit more dusty, beige. This just came in. It is beautiful. So I absolutely love those two. This one, the linen texture one, would really show nicely your quilting. So those are brand new. We just got them in. And yes, I promise you surprise. Guess what? Tomorrow is our last day of our quilt alone. We have been doing a winter village quilt alone. And we do have maybe one or two kids left for the big quilt, but I have a surprise for you. You get to be the first to see it, my mini winter village. What do you think of this one? Yes, thank you. I love it. Give me thumbs up on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to visit our website at Laundry Basket Quilts. Isn't that delightful? I used, so I did, if you wanted to, go to the classes. And what we did every week for eight weeks, we posted about the Winter Village and I did quilt along with you. You're gonna need a pattern for the quilt, but I also gave you the free recipes on my blog for the minis, and I showed you how I come up with the recipes in our video. So go to our Winter Village one, two, or three. In all three of them, I taught you how to do mini recipes. And here for the border on the top and the bottom, I used our brand new Quilters Dozen. So go to our website, we have the blocks. I tell you what, it was so easy. I opened the box, everything was pre-cut for me, and I made my borders for the top and the bottom of the quilt. I also have a really nice template and a video on the Pinehurst, those low trees. Now, Erin, do we have any questions? We do. We have a few questions today. Wonderful. I'm so thankful you asking questions because it brings to our attention to the top what you are interested in it. And I'm here to answer them and I so much enjoy it. So our first question today is, what is the best method to make flying geese? Would it be a non-waste or with a special ruler? So my personal favorite to make flying geese is the block lock rulers and they come in multiple sizes. And I know it's, uh, when I first got my first one, I thought, oh my gosh, this is so expensive, $22, the varies. So at first I was a little hesitant, but I tell you what, once I used it, I was like, this is the best money I ever spent. So block lock ruler that's the way i would do my flying geeses i sew my pieces i shut my ruler i trim it they are perfect my stars come out beautiful even uh yesterday when i was working on this part i grabbed the ruler and scrubbed all my little uh, flying geeses for the points it was amazing that's for me it works the best our next question, when you starch your fabrics, do you need to wash them first or do you just starch only? See, I only starch. Um, so you can pre-wash your fabric, but if you pre-wash, you have to pre-wash all your fabric. I many times work from swatches, small pieces, and if I wash it, they will fall apart. So what I like to do is I just go ahead, starch my fabric from the back, uh, spray it with best press, get it nice and stiff, and that way, and for me, I don't like to pre-wash my fabrics because I really love my quilts to shrink a little bit after they're quilted. So when, um, once I have my quilt made, I wash it and it shrinks and it looks vintage and looks so amazing, looks antique. So I, I look forward to that. I do test my fabrics. So if there is a dark navy or bright red or dark red burgundy, I made sure I take that fabric, squeeze it in a white paper towel or white towel or piece of muslin, squeeze it hard 
and then open it up. If it bleed, then you need to reconsider if you're gonna use that fabric in your quilt or if you need to pre-wash it, put a little die catcher with it and then see what's going on. For me, if something bleeds, I don't use it in my quilt. I just don't wanna take the risk. I love my quilts, I have worked hard, I have some bad experience that I use the fabric that bleed, it taught me a lesson. So, you know, one way or another, you learn something. Our next question, how do you choose the color of your blocks? Do you combine them? And how do you combine them to get these beautiful quilts that you come up with? So I always, when I select fabrics for my blocks, I use a rule of five, big print, medium print, small print, stripe, and a polka dot. I look at, at the prints, then I look at, at the color. I choose my big print, and in my big print, I have variety of colors. Then I look at for the clue. If I have a big flower that it's red, I grab another fabric that it's red and have a low accent. You know, next week, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna prepare a little stash, and I'm gonna show you how I match and how I pay attention to the colors and clues in my fabrics, okay? So last week, you asked me about the thread, so I brought some of my favorite threads for quilting and I did not take it out of my machine. I have also superior that I like to use it, but I thought you maybe want to try this one because we have it on our website and it's a really nice quality thread so you can use that one. But for next week, I'm going to make sure I prepare a wonderful uh, to show you how I match my fabrics. Does the Hobbs Tuscany batting contribute to the beautiful drape that your quilts have? Yes, 100%. I'm telling you that. And also, so the bedding is very important. But another thing, first lesson that I learned from grandma, when she taught me how to quilt, she said to me, never bias on the outside of your quilt, on the outside of your block, on the outside of your rows. And at first I didn't understand what that mean. But many times when you cutting triangles, you are gonna have a bias edges. So you're gonna make sure that you cut a triangle, no bias edges on the outside of your block. The bias edges have to be inside of your block. So that way your bias goes through the quilt the right way. So always pay attention to that and no bias on the outside of your quilt so it doesn't ruffle the edges. So when you're cutting as much as you can, pay attention to that. So you get a nice blocks that are square, nice rod that are, uh, you know, straight and a nice quilt that doesn't ruffle on edges. But definitely 99% is my bedding. Last question for today, what fabric number uh, for the background um, that you just Okay, let me table. grab my glasses and I'm gonna find that number for you because you guys gonna love to hear this. This one is 9057N1, 9057N1. We also have a 9057L that it's really good, but I chose the little bit darker top here. And this one looks great for modern quilt, traditional quilts, it gives you great background. And this one is uh, right here, um, 8511-LN. 8511LN and I love it because it has tiny little branches on it. It's really pretty. I really like those as backgrounds. So those are a little bit toned down, but it gives you like that vintage antique feel to it, like that first quilt I showed you. If you want to mimic that muslin, those two pieces would be perfect for you. We did have quite a few questions for today, so oh. we would love to maybe email those in they can email at support at laundry basket quilts i love that please don't forget to email us our girls at the customer service will make sure we answer all your questions so email at uh, support laundrybasketquilts.com and just be patient we're gonna make sure that we answer those and i'm also look over those questions and then next week i'm gonna make sure i tapped into them and address them and maybe prepare some things for you and stay tuned guess what 
we are not done with stars. We have a lot more stars to show you. So next week, the baby Moa quilts that are glowing and sparkling on your wall. And I don't want to forget the quilt behind me. It's one of my personal favorite and it's from our Handful of Scraps book. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in, staying and watching. If you have idea for a show that you want to see something, make sure you email us and I will gather quilts and address and visit and talk to you about it. Happy quilting and stay nice and cozy.